Hello everybody! Today's video is going to be the early signs of autism that I saw in my son. I have never done a video like this before, but I thought it was important to remember and to share what I saw in Sawyer at a very young age that definitely were red flags that he had autism. I will be including some clips from when he was little because we have the footage um, that we can show you you know, when things changed for him. I will do a little bit of a story time to get you up. You know, I'll talk about when he was a little born and then to where he is kind of now a little bit too, so you guys can get a full picture. Um, so Sawyer, he was born, everything was typical. Everything was great. And um, I would say a little after his first birthday, he started showing signs. So the first sign that I saw um, was he started, when he started walking, it was toe walking. He has always toe walked from the minute he took his first steps, he was toe walking. Um, Sawyer was, I, I think most autistic people, autistic kids are, when parents notice it, the kids seem to be doing fine, like hitting milestones, and then something happens. Just like something changes. I don't know what it is, the way their brain is growing, um, something changed. Because Sawyer was doing eye contact, he was babbling, he said mama, dada, and then after, um, a little after one, everything kind of sort of, you know, uh, he was digressing, he was losing all of those skills that he had. So, toe walking was the first one we noticed, but he was still giving us eye contact, still was babbling, still was saying mama, dada. And then a little while later, a few months, after that, we noticed eye contact was slipping. Um, didn't happen overnight. Like it wasn't like he was looking at us and then the next day he wasn't. It was a slow, gradual disconnect from where he, it was in the family. He was not looking at us. And then second was not answering his name. He did not answer his name. I can remember screaming his name, like Sawyer, nothing, um, just, in his own world. Sawyer. Sawyer. Guy. And then at a very, very young age, I noticed he really enjoyed spinning. We had a Johnny jump up and he loved spinning in that. I mean, loved it. He would do, it looked like Cirque du Soleil. He would just spin and spin and spin and spin. And I thought it was so cool, but now I look back, it was definitely a stem. He was stemming 100%. Um, and he still spins to this day. He is, um, he would get an Olympic gold medal in spinning if, if there was some kind of competition. <laughs> he is an expert. So the next sign I saw, this was probably 18 months, closer to two, started getting really obsessed with TV screens. A, uh, sp specific TV shows like he loved Umizoomi, all about numbers, all about letters. Um, could not get him away from it. All he wanted to do was watch that. Didn't want to watch anything else. Was just these learning things, and it's still very typical for him even now. Um, and again, within that one year, between one and two, he um, he lost so much like of his skills. So he was not talking, there was no eye contact, he was toe walking and spinning. Within that one year, things changed for him so, so much. Now another symptom that I, I don't hear too much about um, in other autistic kids, maybe because I'm just not knowledgeable in it, because um, I don't know a ton of people that have autism, um, and I haven't seen it in videos, but Sawyer has moments where he gets obsessed with certain types of food like blueberries he'll want to eat a hundred of them um right now he's in a bread a bread stage where he wants to eat only bread um and we have to be very careful about this because it's it's not healthy but he just all he wants are like noodles like he's to go through these phases and i remember even at that young of age he would be very particular on the foods he would want and you could see he get frustrated he would throw the food not want it wouldn't eat it um he just it's, I think it's an autistic thing. He just gets this like mindset, I want this and this only. Another symptom I noticed as he was getting older, again, this is like the first year of, I feel like autism was really showing between one and two. Um, he started very sensory. He's a sensory seeker. He loves to be touched, tickled. He begs for it. He wants everyone to be like, he loves to be touched, um, which is just like his twin. Uh, Griffin loves to be uh, pressure, but he likes the light 
touch. Like Griffin, he wants to be pushed. Sawyer wants the tickles all over his hands and his feet and under his arms. So uh, I can remember him like really wanting tickles, like always trying to get tickled from us, trying to come up to us, trying to tell us without language, trying to um, yeah, tell us that he wanted to get tickled because it was, he loved it. <laughs> And then another sign when he was getting closer to two, like if we took him to the park, he would just walk away from us um, and just keep going no matter, you know, he, we always were watching him, but I definitely did an experiment one time and just see how far he would go. He wouldn't have never stopped. He, he has, did, was not connected to what was going on. He had no sense of danger. He still had no sense of danger even now. Um, he... Uh, just would keep going and I was like that's scary and I can remember Kate okay, always got to keep a very close eye on him because he could just elope he has tried to elope before um, as I was older when he was older um, it's getting a lot better right now but um, there are definitely moments where he scares the jeebies out of me <laughs> but yeah I can remember that happening around two and just being whoa so the last thing I want to talk about is meltdowns. I can remember one of the first meltdowns he had. He was probably 15, 16 months old and he was unconsolable. And you know, I have six, I have six kids. I know what and I think a typical a meltdown is for a typical kid and how they react and Sawyer went on and on and on and on and on and there was nothing I could do to help him and it was it was horrible um there's different types of meltdowns i think for different autistic kids and for typical kids you know i think a typical kid would have a meltdown where they cry they're upset they go in time out you can kind of reason with them eventually they you can you can get get through to them autistic kid for my my son you could you can't get through to them they're just they just scream and cry and they, 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 they thrash and there's just nothing you can do until they are mentally able to come down from wherever they are. And I remember that when he was very little and it was very scary. And I didn't, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was just, I just said, you know, oh, it was just a meltdown and, you know, it won't happen again. But then they kept happening and it was, it was really hard um, when he was really little because he couldn't communicate to us. Now he can text start telling us what's wrong so we can, can get through to him easier and we did learn some tricks with ABA um, how to help through um, help him through some of these meltdowns um, which has been a game changer for us we only did it for a few months but ABA very super helped us with Sawyer's meltdowns now so these were the first signs I saw autism in my son between one and two it's kind of the range of where um, it started showing signs for us for him and um, if you have any questions I'll try to answer them in the comments uh, I'm gonna try to do more autism videos just because I feel like it's important Sawyer has a disability and it's not just about Griffin and his disability they both have it and I really want to start sharing both sides of their lives to help others out there so yeah thank you for watching like and subscribe and don't forget guys you are wonderful Bye.